example number three, we have one third plus a over 2a plus 1 minus a. In this question, we have something slightly more complicated than the previous two examples. This time we have three terms instead of just two. So what we'll do first of all is to make things simple, just consider these two fractions adding together to begin with. Uh, minus a at the end, we'll worry about that in a moment or two. So what we have here is one third plus a over 2a plus 1. Like our previous examples, in order to proceed, we must have a common denominator. And in order to achieve a common denominator, we must multiply each fraction by the opposite denominator. So fraction number 1 will be multiplied by 2a plus 1. And fraction number 2 will be multiplied by the opposite denominator, 3. We need to remember that if we multiply by 2a plus 1, then we must multiply by 2a plus 1 on the top. And similarly, on the second fraction, multiplying by 3 on the bottom, we must multiply by 3 on the top. This is so that the fractions on the next line will be equivalent to these two. So our new denominators for the two fractions that we are adding together will be the same. 3 times 2a plus 1 is 3 bracket 2a plus 1. And the same thing. on fraction number 2, 3 times 2a plus 1. Our first numerator, 1 times 2a plus 1 is just 2a plus 1 and a times 3 which is 3a. We don't want to forget about our minus a so we'll tag that on at the end and deal with it in a couple of moments. So looking at the two fractions we are dealing with first, we have two fractions with a common denominator. So now we can write these down as a single fraction with a denominator 3 times 2a plus 1. On the top line, we have 2a plus 1, add 3a. And again, we'll tag our minus a on at the end and deal with it in a couple of moments. What we have on our first fraction uh, is some like terms on the numerator. These can be collected together. So again, we'll put down a denominator. And on the top line, we have 2a plus 1 plus 3a. 2a plus 3a gives us 5a. And then our plus 1. Our next thing is minus a. So what we've got at the moment is one fraction minus a. Now what we want to do is turn this into another fraction and the simple way of turning anything into a fraction is just to put it over one. So now we have two, subtract, uh, two fractions and we are going to subtract. In order to proceed, we must have the same denominator, or in other words, a common denominator. An easy way of achieving this is just to multiply each fraction by the opposite denominator. So the first fraction will be multiplied by 1, which means it will stay the same. 
And the second fraction will be multiplied by 3 times 2a plus 1. Remembering that when we multiply on the bottom, we must multiply by the same amount on the top so that our fraction on the next line is equivalent. So what we have now is our first fraction again, 5a plus 1 over 3 times 2a plus 1. And our second fraction, well, the denominator first, we have 1 times 3 times 2a plus 1, which is just 3 times 2a plus 1. As expected, the same as the first fraction. And on the top line, we have a times 3 times 2a plus 1, which can be written... 3a times 2a plus 1. We now have two fractions with a common denominator. So this can be written as a single fraction. Our denominator is still 3 times 2a plus 1. And on the top, we have, first of all, 5a plus 1 minus 3a times 2a plus 1. So, now we have a single fraction and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to multiply out this bracket and see if we achieve anything that can be simplified on the top. We have run out of room so we will move this fraction here, this one, up to the top of the page. So in order to see if we can simplify as we said, we will multiply out this bracket. So our next line, first of all, putting down our denominator. Three times two a plus one. And on the top line, again, we have five a plus one. Then we have minus three a times two a which is minus 6a squared, then minus 3a times plus 1, which is minus 3a. We have some like terms on the top line that can be collected together. So first of all, putting down our denominator again, we have 5a and we have minus 3a, which is 2a. We still have our plus 1. And we have our minus 6a squared. So we now have a single fraction. What we need to do now is see if it can be simplified. Now at present we can't simplify this fraction, but if we look closely at the top, we notice that we have a trinomial expression that can be factorised or possibly can be factorised. If we have something on the top that can be factorised, we should do that because we may get something that can be simplified or cancelled with something on the bottom. Now, the trinomial expression on the top, the next step would be to try and factorise that into two separate brackets. But this one, in fact, will not factorise, so we will, would be wasting our time. So this, in fact, is our final answer. Our fraction is 2a plus 1 minus 6a squared over 3 
times 2a plus 1, our final answer.